Uh, in Galatians 5, we also see the word patience. Uh, the New King James, and I think the King James also uses the, the term long-suffering. These words are kind of interchangeable, and we'll see this in a future video as well. But th these two words, patience and long-suffering, have the same understanding. Um, these words are birthed from the same Greek word. But to make it easier to remember, I want to really try to do my best to talk about patience in this teaching. Um, I have two daughters right now at the time of this recording. One is four, one is seven. And both of them had seasons in their young lives. They're both very young, but in their early life when they were beginning to learn how to communicate, where my wife and I would tell them something and they immediately asked, what does that mean? It's a new word for them. So they didn't pick it up easily. And they both had, you know, those temper tantrums around two and three where they would demand things instantly and they didn't understand why they weren't getting their way right there and then. Uh, why am I not getting fed right now? And once they could comprehend the identity of waiting, we started using this term. You need to learn to be patient. Well, every time we asked them that, they would ask, well, what does patient mean? And, and my wife and I struggled with this explanation. And so we just would tell them, what well, means you have to wait? And they would say, well, we are waiting. And so it was a little confusing for them. And one day I was, I had to have been the Holy Spirit because one day I'm talking to them. I said, you have to be patient. And she said, well, I am waiting. I said, well, that's not what patience is. I said, patience is when you wait with a good attitude. Oh, well, that changed everything because <laughs> they weren't being patient. They were waiting with a bad attitude. They were very impatient. And then that's really the difference between impatience and patience. Patience is when you can wait on something with a good attitude. Impatience is when you can wait on something with a bad attitude. And we've both experienced, uh, we've all experienced both of those identities in our lives. But when you really think about patience, uh, you may think that patience is temporary. In other words, I only have to be patient until I get what I'm waiting on. But the reality is you will live in a constant state of wait. Uh, until we walk into eternity with Jesus, you're always going to be waiting on something. There are things that are promises of God in Scripture that we are told we will not get in this life. Uh, there are things that we're waiting on. We're waiting on the return of Christ, our King. He promised to come back as a reigning King. We read about it in the book of Revelation. Jesus talked about it. But guess what? It hasn't happened. I'm still patiently waiting for His return. There are prayers that you will pray. And believe it or not, there are prayers that you will pray that you will not see the culmination of. You won't see that answer to prayer. Uh, there are things that you will pray for that people in the future will reap the benefit of your prayers. And the question is, can you still be patient in those seasons? An explanation, or, or excuse me, an illustration of this is uh, my mom. Uh, she passed away back in 2014 from multiple diagnoses of cancer. She battled it for a few years and uh, I remember when I was a teenager and I was dating, uh, she got into this mode of, you know, grandma mode all of a sudden, even though I was dating, she, she already had planned out my future. You're going to marry somebody. And she'd always tell me this. She said, you are going, your first child will be a girl, a redheaded girl with blue eyes, and her name will be Isabella. And to be honest, I never liked the name Isabella, but she would tell me, well, I'm praying that your first child is a daughter <laughs> with red hair, blue eyes. And she will be named Isabella. I kept telling mom, I'm not naming her Isabella. I had a totally different name picked out for my first daughter if I had a daughter. Well, long story short, my mom passed away uh, after I was married, but before my first daughter was born. And when she was born, my wife and I had the conversation and I just knew that I had to name her Isabella. And my wife said, well, what if she doesn't come out with red hair and blue eyes? I said, I don't know how I know. I just know she's going to come out with red hair and blue eyes. And guess what? She absolutely did. She's a beautiful little girl, red hair, blue eyes, named Isabella. Oh, what was that? That was an answer to a prayer that my mom was patiently waiting for, but never actually saw in this life. See, this is where patience really kicks in. And this is the, the burden of what it feels like, a burden of patience, is can you be patient? Can you wait expectantly with a good attitude, knowing that you may never actually see the fruition of what you're praying for? When you look at Hebrews chapter 11, what we call the hall of faith, I actually call that the hall of patience. Because when you go read through, the writer of Hebrews lists out all these names throughout scripture. And it says specifically, all these people had faith for something that they actually never saw come to fruition. Abraham is a great example. God promised him that your descendants will be as numerous as the stars. Well, guess what? We are now included in the, in the family of Abraham by faith because of Jesus. We're included in the faith that he had. 
Guess what? Abraham didn't get to see that. Abraham only saw a couple kids born. He never got to see the thing he was patiently waiting for. And so there may be things that you're praying for right now. And I want to encourage you. Patience is not about waiting until I get what I want. Patience is about having confidence to know that my prayer will be answered whether I see it or not. How do I get to this place, though? I have to remind myself, he is God. I am not. So in all things, at all times, I can remain patient and live out this fruit of the Spirit because I trust him in all things.